Pretty love. More than anybody else, Bream has constantly worked to extend the repertoire. This side. That side. In addition to exploring the music of Elizabethan England of 400 years ago, he has inspired many contemporary composers to write new works, works that set out to extend the technique and the expressive possibilities of the instrument. You've got to try for all those, because the wind, you see. Hans Werner Henze is writing just such a work, a massive solo tour de force, over half an hour long, a sort of hammerclavier for the guitar, based on Shakespearean characters. Oh, oh come on, Hans. You've got to make a game of it. The title, Royal Winter Music, derives from Gloucester, from the beginning of Richard III, when he says, not yet being a king, now is the winter of our discontent. And after a while in his speech, he talks about a lute, he says, and listens in a lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasing of the lute. And I thought, the sounds we are now going to hear will be those lute noises transposed onto a modern guitar and to the hands and the skill of a modern guitar player. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Right. Now what about what is the top note of the next chord? Is it a B? Uh, it's a terrific stretch and it has to be a B. Yeah, well I mean that's what I've got to do, but I'll try this note. It's good. Fantastic. Yeah, it's lovely. Not bad, is it? Mm. Now the next chord is really just too much for me. Unless I do that with my nose. <laughs> now, I, I try to simplify this, Hats, and I came up with this chord. So the top note is... Is A, a. C, G, C, E. Does that sound right? Sounds nice. Let's see how it works first. A. I've been working on this for months now with Julian Bream and the piece is more or less there on paper, but it's still in the making. You want a sort of chord because you're going to make a feature of these two fifths, aren't you? Yes. The guitar is very complicated, an instrument, and you need to learn a lot about it, which you can only do by working with the guitar player. The strings have to ring. They do. So we've got to get a... You've got that triad add there, you see, but in fact, I can't play the bass line. I can't do this because I've got to come down the fingerboard. So, could we put that triad an octave lower, do you think? Unless you take more time. But you say tempo justo there. Oh, hands. <laughs> well, let's change it. Take time. Put it in English. Take time. That's it. Liberamente. Yeah, uh, lovely. What is so exciting is that very often he comes up with an idea to change something. And a month later, I discover that he has come back to my original suggestion. Just the necessary... Yes, but what, what you, you... So he is not one of those who want you to make comfortable arrangements and to get around all kinds of new problems, but he really faces very straightforwardly the problems that present themselves to the guitar and to him. And the outcome is, I think, a very fruitful and healthy cooperation between a creative guitar player and a learning composer. I think 
there is something fascinating about plucked sound. The plucked instruments, most of them, if not all, come from the East. And perhaps it's to do with Eastern mysticism and religious experience. But plucked sound has a remarkable quality because the actual pluck itself is the apex of the sound and thereafter it dies. And if you are playing, say, a phrase of six or seven notes, you are dealing really with six or seven births and six or seven deaths. We hate death and we don't know how to deal with it. So in fact, we sustain our lives as long as possible. The excitement is also in the spaces between the notes, and therein lies the poetry of plucked sound. 